Okay, if you or anyone you know has had a hammer related incident, this video is for you. I'm gonna take my old beaten up hammer and use my 3D pen and some flexible filament to add a flexible grip to it. Let's go back to the beginning so I can show you how I did this. I found the graphic of my choice online, sized it correctly, and then printed it out. I then begin by applying blue painter's tape to where I'm gonna make the flexible handle. I did try applying the flexible filament directly to the wooden handle, but it didn't stick well enough. Uh, I can hear the comments that I don't get saying, oh, the blue painter's tape is gonna peel right off and won't stick at all. Well, if that's what you think, stick around to the end and see what happens. I take that graphic that I printed out and apply it to the handle with some clear tape. This is the flexible filament that I used, and I'm just gonna show the difference between it and some standard PLA. This may not look like it, but I am trying to push this PLA filament together to make it bend. And when you push it too much, it does break. Hey, here's the first sighting of a 3D pen. And I'm just purging out some old filament, and that transition usually looks pretty cool. So with the pen, we're starting by adding in the red and black details of the graphic. I generally find that with a 3D pen, it's best to add the small details first, and then fill in the larger areas around it. With this flexible filament, you'll see me picking at the nozzle a lot, and that's because the filament is very weepy and just continues to seep through the nozzle even after you're done pushing it out. Here I'm filling in the details of the hand, and the bandage finger really pushed the limits of what I can do with a 3D pen. And even then, I ended up coming back in after the fact with an X-Acto knife and trimming out some of the parts that I didn't like. These are all the finished details, and I'm just trying to show that they have some depth to them. Keep in mind that you can use any graphic or artwork when making a flexible handle like this, which really opens up a lot of possibilities. Now we're moving on to filling in the white areas around the details. So I fill in around the edges of all the details before I start to do the larger sections of the handle. At this point, you just have to be careful not to let the white filament bleed up over and cover up any of the details. Can I just say that paper towels are good? I used so many of them to soak up the flexible filament that was weeping through the nozzle. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh yeah, bet you didn't see that coming. Okay, so we are filling in the large sections of the handle. But don't worry, I cut most of it out. Honestly, I had intended to only do one layer, but I noticed that the blue painter's tape bled through the white filament pretty badly. You're not going to believe me, but getting video of this part was much harder than it looks. Ta-da! The finished first layer. Another interesting finding of this experiment was using my wood burning tool to smooth out the flexible filament, which I wasn't sure would work. And it actually ended up working out really well, even though I was just trying to smooth out the bumps for the second layer. I know, I know, more tape. Here I'm just trying to make some nice edges to pen up against for the second layer. You can also see that I'm covering up the details because I'm actually not gonna make a second layer over them. I'm just gonna make an inset window around them. Now I'm just tracing the edges of the tape I added, trying to get as straight an edge as possible to make that inset window. Finally, we get a glimpse of what the white second layer is gonna look like. And you can already see that the blue bleeds through a lot less. All right, yes, some more cuts of filling in large areas, but I really did cut out a lot of it. To finish up, I used an X-Acto knife to trim around the edges of the inset window to again to try to make it as clean as possible. Okay, for whatever reason, I found the removal of this part of the tape oddly satisfying. But not so much this. And here's the finished flexible grip. I was pretty happy with how the details came out, considering this was a brand new type of filament for me. I also think it's awesome that the detail is built into the handle itself and won't wash off, fade, or be scratched off. 
Alright, let's now see how firmly this sucker is on there. Okay, this is being a little dramatic, but I really do start trying to twist and pull the handle off, and it does not move at all. I think the filament really shrinks a lot when it cools and becomes tightly held in place. And now I'm just having some fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it opened up the possibilities for you of what flexible filament and 3D pens can do. You should also check out my general 3D pen tutorials to help get started or improve your existing skills. And if you want to know how to buy the best 3D pen for you, check out this video. And if you found any of this useful, consider subscribing and ringing that bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.